<laughs> what is up folks? Welcome back to another video. Ah, watch the plants. We are across the street at the million dollar property. Hope I didn't offend anybody with that. I'm not trying to flex, just what I call it, but it's the property, the new property. And one of the most requested things that you guys have asked for, for us to do on this new property, is to build a pond. I mean, I've seen it a million times. There's all these natural creeks that run the length of the property. This is just one, but this is one of the most prominent ones. I even saw one guy said that we should put a, a hydro plant out here to generate electricity from the streams, which I thought was an amazing idea. But one thing we can accomplish, folks, is we can use this beautiful natural water feature right here that never dries up. And it goes right there. And if you guys look closely, it almost already looks like a pond. So guys, when we first toured this property, I showed you guys this creek. The one thing we said that we were gonna do that we never did was track it, walk up it and see where this dang creek comes from because neighbor Daryl has been managing this property for over 10 years and he says it's never been dry. So I wanna know where this thing starts. Daryl thinks this thing might just like, just start out of a side of a hill or something. But truth be told, I've never walked it. I've wanted to. God, look at that thorn bush, bro. Yeah, if that thing get look at those thorns oh my god bro feel that ryan they don't have stuff like that in chicago oh. bro that's like barbed wire fencing <laughs> right there i'd rather run into barbed wire than i would that holy moly keep your eyes peeled boy it is dangerous back here oh dude look at this it like wraps around look how deep the bank is getting right here too when it floods and when a lot of water comes through here it has just dug the side of this hill out oh that was almost it right there hope y'all are rolling for that I'm gonna go ahead and go with Daryl. This thing probably never dries up. I mean, just looking at it. Wow, look at this little puddle right here. Dang. Oh! oh. Uh, we're on an adventure. Dang, a little waterfall right here. A little trifecta waterfall. Definitely gonna build a waterfall into this pond when we're done with it. That's my plan, at least. We found it, boys. It looks like when it rains a lot, it continues to go up this way. But the water is just coming out of the side of the hill right here just coming out right there. I mean, if that, if all that stuff's dry and this is still flowing, I mean, that just means it's spring fed, right? I mean, that's, yeah. it's just coming out of the earth. I'm sure there's somebody in the comment section educating us all on how this all works. So definitely you educated folks get down there and explain it. And you folks looking to learn, there's probably some info down there. We'll also talk to neighbor Daryl a lot in this video. He can kind of break a lot of this down in layman's terms. Oh dude, look at this fence right here. That's random. How old do you think this fence is? The post is just like a, a knot of wood out of the ground that just fell off of a dead tree or something. Hope that's not a property line. Hope we're not just trampling all over somebody else. There's no way, there's no way. Somebody had to put this out, I don't know. So this creek flows, the spring. Is it spring or a creek? Spring fed creek? I'm trying to get like the it. terminology right so I don't sound like an idiot even though I am. But that creek flows all the way through here and it just dumps right down here. It looks like this could have been a pond in a previous life. You know what I mean? Like. It's like a little circular area right here where this water just kind of naturally waterfalls down. The banks are like high, like this thing could hold water in theory. Now see down there where Ryan is sitting is where we're gonna dam it. So the water escapes this little circular area right back behind Ryan. And we're just gonna dam up that entire area and hopefully by the end of this whole thing, we've got a freshwater pond that's self-sustaining, it'll never dry up and we're gonna stock this thing with some fish at some point in time. This all sounds good in theory, but there's a lot of stuff that's gonna have to happen first. We're gonna dam it up somewhere right here. We're not looking to have a huge pond at the end of this. We just want something that will stay a pond and it'll be a functional waterway. Building a dam, you have to do it right or else the pressure of this water, once it fills up, is just gonna blow that dam right out because this water is trying to follow the path of least resistance all the way down this little creek. It probably just goes for miles. Now, neighbor Daryl, this is really his brainchild. He was actually just down here like bush hogging and stuff on a tractor. He's, a, he's just a great freaking guy, if you don't know. He's done so much to help us on this channel, but he has got a very specific idea and he sent me a list of materials. So let's head on to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever we end up, get everything, all the tools and stuff, everything that we're gonna need to create a pond on the new property. So I'm looking hey, forward to it. Don't Talk bad, you know, put me in no boats in <laughs> That's the first rule of the new pond. Yes, no, no cheap boats. boats. No boats at all, no but definitely all. no cheap boats. Ayo will have a yacht in here before we even put fish in here, if I let them know. It's a good point, Daryl. Come on, big money. 
<laughs> like a glove, didn't even have to jiggle it. Wow, that was my first attempt blind, basically. Holy moly. So we're here at Home Depot. I asked Daryl, because Daryl's like the mastermind of this whole thing, right? I was like, hey man, would you mind making me a supply list? You know, that way I can go to the store, grab everything. And he was like, yeah, I got you. So I was expecting like this really long list. This is what uh, Daryl sent me. Bags of concrete, cinder blocks. <laughs> that's it, that's, that's all he said. I was expecting a lot more stuff than that. I'm guessing he has a bunch of stuff already there at the house that we don't need. What can I say? Everybody needs a neighbor like Daryl. So, uh, so he's thinking, Daryl's thinking like a hundred bags of 40 pounds, which I think is 4,000 pounds, or am I crazy? 40 bag, 100 bags of 40 pound sack cream. Is 4, that 4,000 pounds? 4,000 pounds. Two tons? That's not, this is, this can't push two tons. Find the cheapest stuff they got, man. He said none of this even matters. Like fast setting, long setting, extra strength. Daryl said none of that stuff matters. Get the cheapest stuff they have. So I'm gonna honor the man's word and I'm gonna find the cheapest 40 pound bag of concrete. This is gonna be a lot easier than I thought. The only 40 pound they have is right here. So we're gonna go with that. And we need a hundred of them apparently. Now we need some cinder blocks. Neighbor Daryl said a dozen will do. I'm guessing cinder blocks are just cinder blocks? I mean, there are different types of cinder blocks. That makes sense to me. That's your pretty standard average cinder block right there. Dude, these things are heavier than you think they are. They are. For some reason, I had like this image as a kid, like you could just like kind of knock them over and stuff, but now I'm an adult man. I'm just like, tighten your core. Jeez. How much do these things weigh, by the way? Do y'all know? I don't know. I think like 15 pounds, maybe. 15? I think. It's got to weigh more than that. Feel it with your offhand. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's more than <laughs> It might be like 30 or 40 even. Jesus. What do you think? How heavy is this thing? There's so yeah, many in the comments. It's just 30. like, you idiots, it weighs blah, blah, blah pounds. But I don't work with center blocks enough to know how much they weigh. They're freaking heavy. And once we move them like once, twice into the trailer, three times to the pond, all this stuff's going to be heavy by the end of the day. So we got a little issue here, folks. We're gonna take care of it, not a big deal, but the 40 pound sackcrete section, as you can see, is a little lacking right now. They're gonna to have to do some restocking or something. But in the meantime, we need way more than that. This thing weighs a billion tons. Oh yeah. What's up, man? How you doing? Good. I got kind of an odd request as well. Um, we noticed there's a, there's a whole pallet of these back there. Now, I want to buy the whole pallet, like in addition to these. All right, guys, first things first. Oh, shoot, Ryan just pulled down a tree back there. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I, out of my periphery, I just saw a tree like falling towards me. I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> Woo! Ryan, the intern, he's here. First things first, folks, we're gonna have to clear pretty much this entire side right here because all the work that we're gonna do building this dam up and getting water to actually stay in this little pond area, we have to be able to access all of us. Let's do some clearing. You know, these battery powered power tools get a bad rap, but man, they freaking, they freaking get the job done. Ow.
Oh, that tree's leaves are so sharp. Ow, this is a sharp leaf tree. Uh, uh, uh. Sharp leaf tree. Looks better already, man. I could come right here to the new pond and just a little dangle right there. Imagine this thing full of water and just teeming with life. It's gonna be a reality soon. Whoa, first time in the pond. Oh Lord, a tree just fell on me. This is gonna be the coolest pond ever. Well, not as cool as Bama Bass's pond, but nobody's got a pond that cool. Come on. I'm guessing with this one, I wanna cut this thing as close to the root as possible, right? Like way down there. Yeah. Of course I could section it off too, but I don't believe in wasting time. You may want to hit that with the chainsaw, say, my guy. Put the big boy to it? Yeah, put the big boy on it. We still got this guy to deal with. I have to cut that big tree down, but yeah. Wow, dude, it goes through it so easily. It's like you can't even control the cut. Yeah, I guess now you could get as close as you freaking can. And... Oh, in the mud. <laughs> Let's go. Frick it. Oh tree on my head watch yourself ah now we got big boy here it's the biggest tree by far we're gonna have to cut down now it looks like it's leaning like that way if you guys i don't know if you can tell but it looks like it's kind of leaning towards where the creek is running so i'm gonna try i believe if you cut the back side of it then it should go towards the opposite side that what you're cutting right i think as long as we get out of the way it's fine but let's just hope it goes that way <laughs> All right, what's she doing? She doing anything? She's going the right way so far. It's going the right way? Yeah. I think I need to cut it more this way so it'll actually like go down. I think it's gonna get caught on this tree no matter what. <laughs> Woo! She's leaning. There she goes. Whoa! <laughs> that is so much bigger of a tree than I thought it was. Dude, we just like covered up half the pond. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, well you guys grade my uh, tree cutting efforts down below. Give me like a, you know, give me a one to 10 scale. I don't think that was bad at all because I literally wanted it to go that way. So I think that was like a nine right there. This situation looks incredibly dangerous, so I don't know. Let's uh, start sectioning her up and get her out of here. Woo, that was intense with that little tree cutting down scene. But this is starting to look like a pond already. I mean, just look at this, guys. This little cleared area right here. We're gonna have to come through again, definitely clear it some more. But once you get down in here, check this out. Ugh. Look at this, guys. This has got some massive potential right here. I think if we can dig this area out some, get some of the mud going, we can actually make this pond like three feet deep, at least. I mean, some of the sides here are already that tall, and we're just gonna have to you know, mess with the dam, which is gonna be right here. Maybe bring up the earth right here a little bit so the water's not escaping. We're also gonna have to get Daryl out here with our little, we ordered a koi pond liner off of Amazon in an attempt to keep this water cleaner and to contain it better. So we're gonna do a little bit more clearing off camera and then the next time you guys see us, we're gonna be bringing all that concrete down here, all those center blocks, the pond liner and the neighbor Daryl. And he's gonna be very valuable because that's the man with the plan, the man with the brains to make this thing happen. But we're gonna get there, boys. Manual labor, can't beat it, so much fun. Oh. Oh. Easy with them, they'll break. Like this, you yeah, mean? Like this. Okay. There's two blocks, another one just like that. Oh, in here? Yep, right where your foot is. All right. And then go straight to that bank with the other one been slopping around the mud for like an hour but we finally got a dam taking place or taking shape I should say just layers of concrete blocks with sackcrete mixed in there some bags have been opened and dumped in and I don't know I, I can kind of see the thing taking shape now Daryl I wasn't quite sure at first it's coming together now you can you can kind of get the gist of it now so I get a really good gist of it we're building up the wall with mud we're kind of like trying to level out this oh, pond bring itself. I want to down here too because I want to see how cold that water is. Oh, you know it's going to be. I mean, it's just being in it right yeah, now. I'm wet. Shade. It's cold. It's going to be in the shade most of the day. Yeah. This yeah. is going to be a cold tub basically, but 
Ryan went to go get some more cinder blocks. We, we never have enough material. That's what I've learned in a project oh, like this. 10. Oh, we found 10. Oh, let's go. We needed like eight or 10 more yeah. to really start making this thing take shape. I am very confident in this dam. I'm much more confident in this dam than I was the dam that me and Ao tried to build in my swamp about a year ago. This is actually gonna work. Day number two of the pond build. Basically gonna do three things today. Gonna reinforce some of the wall that we built yesterday. And a lot of this stuff is already dried. A lot of this concrete is dry. A lot of the stuff that we were doing by hand has dried. So the tensile strength of the wall is definitely there, but we might have to reinforce that today. Then we're gonna have to manipulate that liner, get that new koi pond liner is what it is. I bought it off Amazon, but it's gonna go along all the bottom of the pond and the edges are gonna come up over the walls and that's what's going to actually create the pond where the water is going to hopefully stay where that liner is number three if we have enough time we're going to do like a piping system and kind of help reroute that natural spring and make it go exactly where we want it to go that way there's no water seeping up underneath the tarp when we're done let's start day two insulation bags of sacrete on top of it for now to hold it in place and then we can come back later with tent pegs and um it, should, it, ain't, it ain't got nowhere to go. You know I mean? Yeah, it does, if you're right, it doesn't. We lay a bag of sack. I got, you know, in blocks. We lay a block up here to keep water from. So, guys, if you can envision what's going on here, there's a ton of water underneath the liner right here, especially like right here where it's at its deepest point. So, the strategy is to get this water from underneath the tarp out of here. As this fills up, the weight of the pond liner is going to push down and it should force all of the water that's underneath the liner through the pipe that we have in here. And we see, we haven't clogged this pipe. We're gonna let this pipe continue to run, which is that guy right there. And hopefully all the excess water that's underneath this tarp will come out. I'm a little unsure. Look, it's still flowing. There's still water flowing out though, right? Y'all see that? Yeah. So there is water coming out, but there's no more water coming in. So it's already kind of working what we're doing. Guys, we've got a couple right more things to button up here we'll do off camera. We've got to kind of secure the uh, pond liner. We've reinforced what we're going to reinforce. We've brought up all the walls as high as we really can right now. But the only thing left to do is to let this thing fill up, which is only going to take a couple more hours, and see where the water starts exiting the pond at. Hopefully, it's at this little damn waterfall that we've built and reinforced. But hey, we'll see. All right, folks, we just pulled back up to the pond. Now we've let it sit for, let's just say two hours. And guys, look at the end result. Guys, check out the waterfall. I'm sure you guys already saw it, but we, the waterfall actually is working. We managed to make this spot the lowest spot in the pond. That might seem like an easy thing to do, but when you're just eyeballing stuff and just kind of going with the land and the natural contour of where the water wants to go, it was a lot harder than it seemed to make this the lowest part of the pond. Look at that though, folks. We got a waterfall. Now she's not exactly pretty right now, but we'll get to all that in just a minute. We'll get to the aesthetics of this pond and making it look pretty in just a minute. See, we gotta see how, how deep this thing is because we're also thinking about making this kind of like a cold tub. You know, Daryl and myself, we work some hot <laughs> hot days out here, so we kind of need to have a place to ease in. <laughs> oh my God, it's so cold. <laughs> is the right word. Oh my God, it's so I cold. I see goosebumps on you. Woo-hoo! I'm not even all the way in yet. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Imagine sitting down in there. I'm about to. Uh -oh. Guys, so 
natural spring water. This stuff, I can't describe it, but if you've ever seen one of these little creeks that run through random woods in the south, this water is actually ice cold. And the water, the air temp's what, 100 degrees today? Uh, yeah, 101. This water is so cold, I'm gonna try to venture out a little bit deeper here. You guys can see those coming up past my thighs. So I mean, right yeah. here, If y'all ever been to a and state feet. park, there's a lot of state parks that's got hiking trails. Uh -huh. They got these little creeks that people cross over. Yeah. And you can imagine, that's basically what we've seen and, and decided, hey, this would be perfect spot for a pond. Exactly, literally taking the land, what the land gives you, the, the layout of the property, and then using that to create something yeah, like this. Yeah, this was a natural land. We didn't, we didn't, yeah. we didn't move a half a wheelbarrow full of dirt. I know. Yeah, we didn't, much. we didn't dig anything. Like we, no. we never took a shovel and dug something yeah, out. We, we just, out we moved bottom. stuff around. Yeah. Another yeah, thing, the ground bottom. is super hard right here now. Well, good. The ground now it's still squishy around the edge. Now Daryl thinks that over some time the squish is going to get out of there. I don't really know how it's going to work. I guess the water's got to eventually kind of seep out from where it was. Yeah, where it we was. Got the drain pipe under there too. Because a lot of this was mud. I haven't sunk at all yet. You ain't got squishy yet? No, but well, see, you know, sign. the deepest part was right well, there, the though. the squishiest part was right there, too. The, and that's he, right. He's yeah. out in there. See if it's how, yeah. how much I don't done. want to go too far because this is our other weakest spot right here right. in the pond. It's where the liner is not quite high enough. And we got some ideas on how to improve that. So, oh, it's getting deeper. <laughs> Woo, we're getting to my no-no spot. Oh, my God, it's so cold. Is, Woo! Now I'm squishing just a hair. Yeah. That's where it was real bad right there earlier. So I'm not going to go any further because we don't want to pull this liner down. But, ha, ah, oh my God. It's so cold, dude. I bet. All right. I bet it's real cold. Let's see your nipples and show us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to show you guys. I mean, it's deep right here. If I keep on walking right here. Oh, oh my God. It's so cool. Oh. Oh. That'll cool you off. Oh, my God. Yeah. See, if we put any more people in here, I think the water will be going over the edge. Yeah, I think you're right. It'd be like a big bathtub where there's just too much water rising. Well, you see right there, to you, right there is also another spot we need to put some more. See right yeah, there? Yeah, oh yeah, right we there. We need to put something yeah. up under that. We yeah. got, so we're going to have to bring this wall up for sure from basically where Andrew's standing yeah. to right there. But the rest of it, well, even like right here, it gets kind of high. But I think for eyeballing it, we kind of killed the measurements here. Like, you know, it's a little high right here, obviously the water is, but it has somewhere to escape and there's somebody in the pond. So I'm increasing the pond volume right now just by being in it. So if we're not in it, the water's flowing correctly and we got ourselves a pond in the woods. We're gonna have to get some pool uh, nets or something to kind of help keep this thing clean. I realize that's gonna be one obstacle we have is keeping this thing clean. And eventually we do wanna put fish in. I mean, that's the absolute goal is to make this an actual functioning fish pond. And we've already got the things that you need. We've got water flowing in, so we've got oxygen, fresh, clean water, and you've got some bait that gets washed down in here. Then you've got water going out, so that's controlling the depth of your pond, making sure your dam is holding only what it's supposed to hold. And then with the water tips being regulated like they do naturally in this spring, we don't have to worry about them getting too hot or too cold. Ryan, let me ask you a question, man. Are you one of those people, because you're from up north, right, where it's just cold as hell. Are you one of those like polar ice people that like jump into cold water or what? Yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah, sometimes? We swam in Lake Michigan and it was like 45 degrees. 45, water temp or air yeah, temp? Water temp. Oh my God, isn't that like dangerous? Yeah, there's walk in the park here. Yeah, for you, this should be nothing. Why don't you uh... Just belly flop, we don't break the knee. <laughs> Why don't you give her a shot, man? No, don't die, we're gonna, seriously. We're gonna, Ryan's gonna demonstrate the uh, strength, the tensile strength of the pond right now. $2,500, so if it blows out. <laughs> oh, dude, this thing is solid. It's fine. Dude, oh, how's that? It did wash over the edges, like we said. It did a little bit. Yeah. Me. Dude, it held perfectly. It didn't do anything. I mean, the, the dam's functioning properly. Yeah, we might have let a little bit of water get underneath the tarp right over there, but it that's not going to. We had 5 million gallons e under this morning. Exactly. Yeah. And so, but every time it rains, we get water until we fix that. That's water. right. That's yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Cold? Yes, it's cold. It actually is really cold. Is it Chicago cold? No, nah, it's definitely, definitely not. not. But when you've been working all day in 100 degree heat, oh, yeah. it's really cold then. Like oh, a 30 yeah. degree temperature difference is yeah, cold. Enough to give an old man like me a heart attack. <laughs> hey, we're going to catch you down in here sitting like a hot tub oh, I'm gonna be in a couple here. days. <laughs> I, mean, I promise you, I'll be down here. 
I'm yeah, I might too. Bells, I know y'all are coming. Yeah, <laughs> get some trip yeah. wires set up or with some bells. Tin cans, you run across uh huh. Them. You like to see them movies? Yeah. yeah. That way, if you're naked down here, you yeah, can throw some clothes naked, on yeah. or something. Now we have a bunch of ideas bouncing off of all four of us here. We're thinking stocking it full of types of game fish like bass, bluegill, trout, even maybe in the winter time. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. We're also thinking about adding aesthetic features to it. So I mean, obviously, it's just a tarp on bags of concrete with dirt. So doesn't look as pleasing as it might could with some stone pavers around the edge. A water, a better waterfall, like upgrading the waterfall. Daryl's got some ideas there. Maybe a fountain in there to add some even more air, aerate the water even more. There's really endless things we can do to this pond and I wanna hear from you guys. If you don't know by now, I get a ton of my video ideas from the comment section. So your opinion is very valued here. So before we figure out any more future video ideas, I wanna see, and I'm pretty sure you guys wanna see, how quickly this thing is gonna clear up. Because if you look at it right now, it looks like chocolate milk, right? Because we just got in there, we kicked all the dirt up. Let's wait until like 12 hours from now, tomorrow morning, I'm betting you guys anything, it's gonna be gin clear. We'll be able to have perfect visibility all the way to the bottom. See you guys in the morning. All right, folks, just as promised, we are back. It's the next morning, it's about 8.30. And just take a look at this pond, guys. Guys, the pond has completely cleared up. I mean, it's gin clear. You guys are seeing it. I'm looking at it right now. You can see every square inch of this pond from directly above it. I mean, we're gonna be able to see whatever fish we put in here. It is so gosh darn clear. Even you said you didn't think it was gonna clear up that fast, right? No, no. Guys, it's been 18 hours, right, since we left this place yesterday. So within that time frame, it has completely cleared up all the silt and the dirt I just kind of sat on the bottom, nice and calm. And the water itself is just, you gotta see it. It's as clear as it could possibly be. Now, there are some potential problems here. Now the dam seems to be okay for now. Now, I'm just now noticing the pipe is kind of, flow pipe is kind of getting beat up by all the rocks and stuff that are getting sent down. But we still got water flow going through the creek like we're supposed to. But back here, we got a little bit of a problem here. So I think, Either A, we've got something leaking, like we've got either a hole in the liner, or there's water somehow getting through here that we don't understand, or two, which is my opinion, that it's just seepage. If you guys remember, there was a ton of water underneath this liner, and we had to kind of push it all out with just pressure, but underneath the soil, it's so squishy. I mean, there was so much mud and water that was just there, you know? So I'm, I'm hoping this is all just seepage coming from out, from underneath where we built the pond. Hopefully it's not leaking. We'll have to keep a very close eye on it though because this could be a problem. We've also got a couple low spots on the pond, just spots where, you know, the water could go over the liner in the case of a flood or like a lot of rain at one time. There's a couple spots that we might, gonna have to reinforce for sure, probably soon. But all in all, she's holding together pretty well. Guys, just to show y'all kind of how clear the water is here, I got a little apparatus rigged up. Don't even ask me what I got going on here, but got a juicy jig and a bottle of water. I just wanna, I just want to show you guys how clear this water is. Let's see what the visibility is like. Oh man, I bet you can just see. <laughs> I mean, I can see it just fine. So I can only imagine if there was a fish in there, he would just be like, oh my God, a crawfish. Oh dude, we got to put some crawfish in here too. Yeah. We should 100% once the fish that we put in here get a little bit bigger. In fact, we should put crawfish in there now. That's just one of the many ideas that I've had. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is gonna be so much fun, probably even more fun than we originally thought when we built this thing. All right, folks, this is the end of part one of the journey, and that was just building the pond. Like I said earlier, I want all your suggestions, I want all your ideas, I wanna know what we should do with this thing right now to have some fun with it, because you know who knows how long this thing's gonna be here. One storm could knock this thing out. I would love to stock this thing. I'd love to get bait fish in here. I would love to fish it. I would love to let Daryl use it as a cold tub, but I really want to know what you guys want to see next. I also hope you guys enjoyed this little build. I've been wanting to film over here on the property a lot more recently. I know you guys have been wanting more property uploads, so they are coming, don't you worry about that. And we're also going to be building a bigger pond on this property eventually, knock on wood. That's what my hope is, is to build like an actual bass pond, maybe even something you could put a boat in one day, I don't know, but that's way on down the road. Anyways, folks, make sure you're smashing the thumbs up button on these videos. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel and enabling those bell notifications. That way you do not miss an upload or a giveaway opportunity or a collab or any cool stuff going on this summer. Anyways, folks, thank you for watching. I'm out of here. Let's get some concrete. Oh, ooh, bar and chain oil.
Yeah, my girl is dry. That's not gonna make the video.